So just what have you seen from IU and, you know, just dealing with Trace Jackson Davis again and right. uh, just kind of your thoughts on going into Saturday? Yeah. Well, obviously they have a, they have a really good team. They have a lot of, a lot of experience, um, you know, with Xavier Johnson being out, it's allowed a lot of the other guys a lot more experience, a lot more opportunity. You know, Hood Shafino um, is a really talented player and uh, very dangerous. His last game at home, you know, maybe six or seven from three uh, against Ohio State. And that's just someone that, you know, you've got to be with, you know, at all times, especially if he gets it going. And then Trace Jackson Davis is just having one of the, you know, best years in college basketball. Just hard to hard to deal with, whether he has the ball in the perimeter or he has the ball in the mid post or the low post. and. You just got to know where he is at all time. His ability to make kind of that second effort or that second jump um, is, is pretty impressive. Um, but so, like, when he misses, he normally gets it back or keeps it alive. Someone else can get it. But um, just got to know where he is at all times and, um, and and stick with him. Like, don't give into it. Don't foul him. Don't, you know, just try to stay ahead of the play because when you get behind plays, it's normally over. Why have you guys had pretty good success against him during his career? Um, I think when he was younger, like, it was harder to deal with doubles. Um, you know, for some people didn't double him. We always have had such great respect for him, you know, recruiting him and watching him devour people in high school and then leading into college. You know, you just want somebody else to beat you at that time. Well, now he's much better at handling that. He's much better at passing the schemes that they're using and what they do, you know, really puts you in a bind. You know, you have to have a good double or he's going to find that guy cross court, or he's going to find the guy diving. Um, but no, I think just earlier in his career, it was just something that didn't happen all the time. Now it, it, it happens most of the time. You see it at Illinois. They didn't double him, and he gets 35 points. Um, some other pe- teams haven't doubled him. And, um, you know, he just he just kills you. He gets to the free throw line. He kind of gets everything that he wants. Um, he's going to score points against you. It's just dependent on what you want to try to take away with the effort being on try. Anytime you have a guy like that, um, you, you got to take things away. And you got to do the best that you can to try to limit his vision and limit his touches and then not let him get second chance opportunities. Obviously a rivalry game, but I think that's more for the fans than it is for your team. Is that kind of the message is don't make this bigger than it is. It's, it's the next game on the schedule. Yeah, it's um, just trying to stick with um, you know what we've been doing all year in the game plan. Anytime you're playing someone for the first time, especially your younger guys, just knowing their personnel, knowing like who can shoot, who can drive, who can do both, who's streaky. Um, and then last year, you know, we had a game. You know, Fennessey was the one. You know, we get Trace Jackson Davis in foul trouble, and then Fennessey comes in and, and plays just an unbelievable first half and makes that shot at the end. So um, we talk about that a lot. How you know sometimes guys can have big nights. Just don't let you know the guy coming off the bench who averages three or four points to have a huge night against you. Uh, so you have to respect everybody and, and be prepared. But yeah, it's um, it's a great game. It's a great game for the fans. It's a great game you know, for both teams. And you're always excited to play your rival. Go ahead. Alicia Fino's a bigger guard that's good with the ball in his hands. How do you handle that as a defense? Oh, you got to try to get into it, not let him get comfortable. And uh, when he drives and can attack the rim or just drive to get to his spots and get pulled up, pull-ups, you know, he gets in that rhythm. You, know, you, got to, you just got to try to make it hard for him and not let him get angles and, and use size against him or use quickness against him, depending on who's guarding him from us. But he's a, he's a good player. And, yeah. um, and, and, you know, getting into that rhythm for him also opens up a lot of things for other people. So it's a, it's a real important matchup for us. Defensively, what have you seen from IU when going against uh, bigger lineups? Well, they're, you know, they're a good defensive team. You know, and they, they do a good job of keeping the ball out of the paint. They do a good job of overhelping and not letting the ball get in there off penetration. You have to be able to, to play under control and move the basketball when they overhelp. And, um, but they do a great job, you, you know, defensively. Uh, they really want to keep that basketball. People, a lot of people like to attack the middle. They do a great job of holding their guy at the nail and really trying to stop that type of action. So it's going to be important for us that when, that when they're being that stingy and that aggressive, just to probe the defense and move the basketball. Uh, staying with that a little bit, obviously, uh, you talk about Trace Jackson Davis and everything he provides from just a scoring and a rebounding perspective, mm-hmm. but uh, just his ability to kind of be a disruptor on the defensive end, blocking shots, things like right. that, does that add an extra wrinkle for, you know, Braden and Zach and picking and choosing their spots? Yeah, you have to know where he is defensively. Like, he does a good job in ball screen defense of ignoring him and kind of playing possum 
and then just luring you into thinking you have a layup, and then he blocks it and they go the other end. Um, he, he's, he's very um, experienced in, in some areas around the world. He tries to make you feel comfortable, and he's just, you know, he's just walking you into a trap so he can block your shot. So very good instincts, very, very good instincts. And so you have to be aware of him, but when you get an angle, you got to get to him. If you don't get to him, then he's, he's normally going to get those. Do you consider putting Mason in the starting lineup, or do you, do you not want to no, disrupt the rotation uh, at all? I think about it. I think about it. Like obviously, he had a great game last game. So we'll, we'll see as time goes on. We'll, we'll see. Is Big Ten better when IU and Purdue are both having good seasons? I mean, obviously, when Purdue is in your eyes, that's great. But. Right. Oh, that would be for someone who looks at it a little differently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I want, my people say that always amazes me. Like, it's not good if the Big Ten has other teams that are good. Like, I think if you got, you know, 14 teams, I think everybody would think that. So, yeah, we're not collecting baseball cards. <laughs> so, thanks, guys. All right, I'm done.